Chapter 10. Time Moves On. Summary. Despite the events that transpired, the school year must continue. What can Shota even do? What can anyone do? Life just must continue without their missing students. After Nezu finished, Yagi was still silent with shock. The room had taken on a solemn air. It seemed that Midoriya, their 15-year-old student, was almost certainly dead on their watch. And the teachers didn't know how to take this news, along with what it implied for the rest of the students taken. The room had already talked in circles on whether the lack of connection could be from Midoriya being sedated or put on quirk suppressants. The sedation theory was quickly thrown out as Yagi hadn't noticed a difference at the time of the abduction, and there had clearly been some form of sedative used. The quirk suppressant theory had taken a little longer to disprove. The fact that it was a quirk Yagi could feel and not the boy's life itself had made it seem promising at first. The objection had come from how the aliens could have gotten their hands on quirk suppressants. But it was argued that a dealer could have easily mistaken one of the insectoid aliens for someone with a heavy mutation quirk. But the more damning argument had come from the strength of the quirk suppressants in circulation. No drug on the market could so totally and utterly erase all remnants of a person's quirk. While the technology was certainly revolutionary, none had surpassed Shota's own quirk and Yagi commented on how he never felt a change when, he, when in the past he erased young Midoriya's quirk. This left only one logical conclusion for the group, that Midoriya was dead. There was no other explanation they could come up with. They had no idea on the aliens' intentions when they took the students. It wasn't far from the realm of possibility that they would not need the students alive. But Shota... Shota couldn't believe it. All his life, he has prided himself on following logic. He's as far from an optimist as you can get, picking and sticking to the path that made the most logical sense, believing in the most logical conclusion. But he couldn't. Not this time. For some reason, he couldn't explain if he tried. Shota couldn't believe Midoriya. His problem child was dead. It was along the lines of a feeling, an energy, an unknowable sense. Midoriya was not dead. Five of his promising students this year were not dead. They weren't gone. And for once in his life, maybe he can let go of logic. Let himself hope for a little longer despite how unbelievable it seems. Ignore how it defies all the facts at his disposal. And he clings to his thought for the next two and a half months. He doesn't give up hope when watching the global conference addressing humanity's first contact with aliens. As shock and fear ripples throughout the world, he stays steadfast. He holds himself together when his class crumbles at the news a quarter of their classmates are gone. When they stay optimistic that they'll be okay because no one had the heart to tell them that, Midoriya at least, was almost certainly dead. Not much happens over the next few months. His class tries their best to keep going with some of the most lively classmates gone. Even with most trying to fill in the void of their classmates left, the class is still more subdued, their hope slowly dimming with each passing day. Saro and Kirishima, along with Todoroki and Ida, had been taking it harder than the others. Half of their respective friend groups were gone, after all. It seemed that the four had gravitated towards each other in the following weeks. The shared experience of some of their closest friends being abducted, no doubt helping them to bond together. It also helped that the students were spending more time together than before. Due to the lack of information regarding the abduction, the school wasn't sure if the attack was somehow targeted. 
just to be safe, they had tightened restrictions, resulting in the students spending more time in the dorms. His son, Hitoshi, had also been spending more time in his room in the teacher's apartments. Upon hearing who had been taken, he had broken down and cried and showed his arms. Midoriya, his first real friend in years, and Kaminari, his totally not crush, were just gone. Here one second, gone the next. It certainly didn't help Shota's traumatized son's abandonment issues. Thankfully, though, there had been no sightings of the League since the abduction. His class deserved the reprieve. Crime in general has actually gone down. With the confirmation that aliens exist and the first contact being less than friendly, it seems that humanity had found a common enemy of sorts. More and more funding was being diverted to space-focused programs and defense systems. An odd thing began to happen with Yagi since the connection was cut. Every four days around the same time, he would feel a flicker of the quirk. The first few times he hadn't even noticed. It was such a faint sensation. Just a whisper or a memory of the feeling. Like an echo of something that once was. But life moved on, and on the two-and-a-half-month mark of the student's abduction, Shota sat in the staff room before classes started for the day. The only others in the room were Namuri and Yagi. The scene was so sickeningly normal. Namuri was on her phone, and Yagi was finishing his breakfast, and Shota was drinking his third cup of coffee. It felt like nothing had changed. Like five of his students weren't gone. Like he wasn't holding on to the illogical hope that was the only thing getting him through the day sometimes. Shota let out a sigh and scanned the room again. When he looked at Yagi, he realized the skeletal man had a strange look on his face. Racking his brain, Shota realized it was yet again time for Yagi's strange echo feeling. Though normally it would have passed by now. From what Yagi had said, it never lasted more than 30 minutes, and that's when he noticed it right away. But it was nearly time for class to start. It should be over by now. But looking over Yagi's face, it was clear that he was getting the feeling, and it seemed intense by the way his face was scrunched. But Shota didn't mention it. He just went back to drinking his coffee and waiting for class to start. A few minutes later is when it happened. Yagi let out a shocked gasp, but unlike the gasp Shota had heard those months ago at the conference, this one wasn't one of indecipherable despair. This was one of hope. Suddenly, Yagi was on his feet with tears budding in his blue eyes. It's back, he whispered gently, like he was afraid of scaring something. I can feel it. He's not gone. It's him. One for all is back. Shota didn't feel the grip of his coffee mug slip until it shattered on the floor, but he didn't care. How? Namuri questions in shock. Her normally over-the-top personality instantly reeled in to leave room for the hope her question posed. Yagi's voice shook slightly as he spoke. I can feel it. It's not as strong, but it's there. I can feel him through it. Midoriya is alive. Shota couldn't believe it. Despite all the evidence against it, Midoriya was alive. Despite all the logic, the thread of hope he had been clinging to proved correct. His problem child was alive. And if Midoriya was, then the other students could be too. Shota could almost feel his eyes growing misty, but he ignored it. How is this possible? You said he was gone. Yagi didn't answer, just stared off into the distance with teary eyes. So instead, Namuri answered. Maybe he was sedated or on quirk suppressants and now it's finally worn off? Namuri suggested hesitantly. They had already thrown out those theories, but thinking about it now, maybe it was one of those. 
Those flickers Yagi got of the quirk could have been when a dose of whatever he was given was running low. That would explain why it was so routine, happening every four days. And now he was off whatever drugs they'd been giving him. But why? Could it mean he had escaped from whoever had abducted him? Or could it be something even worse? At that thought, Shota's brain started flooding with worst-case scenarios his twisted mind would come up with. The overwhelming nightmares that his brain concocted, but Shota tries to stop himself. He lets his eyes fall close, and a deep breath fills his lungs. At least they knew Midoriya was alive, which meant the others could be alive. The illogical feeling he had clung on to for what's felt like a lifetime since their disappearance ended up being correct. So maybe, just maybe, his hope that they could find them, contact them, anything, would come true. Maybe he would get his students, kids, back.